This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Trajectory Energy Partners. Trajectory Energy Partners brings together landowners, electricity users, and communities to develop solar energy projects with strong local support. For more information on how Trajectory is leading the solar revolution, please visit trajectoryenergy.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. I'm so excited to have my longtime friend, Rachel Strauss. She's known as Mrs. Green. She's an ecopreneur, and she's the founder of the Zero Waste Week. Welcome back to the Impact Podcast, Rachel. Thank you, John. I can't believe it's been 10 years oh, since we last did this. <laughs> we've been talking off the air, and you and me both cannot believe it's 10 years. And it's just, it's great to hear your voice again, especially in these very strange and uncertain times, reconnecting with old friends and great friends that you have great memories with just makes it seem a little less strange. Yeah, it's, it certainly is strange times, but there have been some good times about it as well. As we were saying about air pollution clearing up and animals coming back and yeah. blue skies and bird songs. So we have to, you know, with all of this, just keep focusing as much as we can on the positives as well. And we're going to do that today. And we're going to talk about all the positives and impacts that you make in this world to make the world a better place. But before we get there, for our listeners that missed our first episode, I'd love you first to share how you even became Mrs. Green. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to take you to a little village in England called Boscastle in 2004 which is kind of where my journey began. <clears throat> so I was there on holiday with my family and we were caught in flash flooding. Hmm. And it was a pretty traumatic experience, to say the least, because 100 people had to be airlifted out of the village on that day. Fortunately, we weren't in amongst those people, but we were there watching the whole thing unfold in front of us. And as you can imagine, that was quite a scary thing to be part of. Um, and I reached a conclusion, John, in that moment, rightly or wrongly, and it was that climate change was actually unfolding in front of my eyes right then. I thought it was going to be 50 years' time, 100 years' time. But witnessing all this trauma around me, I thought it's actually happening right now and I need to be part of the solution because I had a three-year-old child and mm. as, as any parent's going to tell you, you immediately think about them, about their future, what planet are they going to inherit, it needs to be safe and it needs to be beautiful for them. So I was thinking for a while, you know, what what can I do? Because I was just an ordinary person actually doing nothing on the ecological side at all. So I started to make a few changes in my life, you know, swapped out the light bulbs and used the car a little bit less and that sort of thing. And then these ideas were kind of growing for me. And then it, it was in 2008, I thought, I, I really want to kind of do something that has more impact. And so I decided at the beginning of that year, I'd start recycling more and start throwing less in landfill. So you might remember me saying to you back 10 years ago that we yeah. were throw, throwing away, oh gosh, can I bring myself to say this, two and a half bins full of waste every week. Oh God! I've actually got I've actually got my hands in front of my eyes. <laughs> You're so, so sweet. Everything, the glass, the tins, the paper, the food waste, all of it was being thrown away. And um, I decided, okay, that's enough. I'm I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to use my recycling, and I'm going to see what I can do. And to keep myself accountable, really, I set up a, a blog, which was myzerowaste.com. And it was really there for me, John, just to track my progress, to see what I could do, to learn from my mistakes. What I never realised was that two months after starting that blog, I'd have about 80,000 readers every month. So they wanted wow. to know. I know. They wanted to know wow. what's, what's mouldy in the back of her fridge this week. <laughs> <laughs> or... What terrible purchase has she made that she now needs to deal with? <laughs> so 
um, we had these readers and from all over the world as well. Wow. And uh, what I did in the September of 2008 is I challenged myself because I'd been doing this a few months. OK, I'll see if I can throw nothing away at all for a week. I'll have my own zero waste week. And so I called on my readers and said, hey, you know, I could do with a bit of moral support. I don't really want to do this by myself. Now I've come up with the idea. And 100 people said, we'd love to join you. So we started all reducing our waste a little bit to see what we can do. And there were comments every day. Um, and by the end of the week, there were two really interesting things that people had said. The first one, John, was that they had had fun. That's nice. Fun and sustainability typically have not gone together historically. Exactly. So dealing with your waste is fun. Well, suddenly it is. <laughs> um, and the other thing people said was, please, can we do this again? So nice. Nice. I did it again the following nice. September. Right. And so that was the beginning of what we called Zero Waste Week. And I think when I last spoke to you, I'd either just finished or was just getting ready to launch the third one. Um, and and so what's happened since then? Yeah. Give us the last, catch us up to the last 10 yeah. years. Yeah. So I've been sort of racking my brain thinking, what have I done since then? <laughs> so I've, I've got a few sort of milestone points. So um, when I did the first Zero Waste Week, it was 100 people. And then the next year, it was something like 1,500 people. And it and it just started to grow and grow. And so what I did in 2008 is I gave Zero Waste Week its own website because it was kind of getting lost in the noise of the My Zero Waste website. Mm. So it, it had its own website. Um, and there's a mailing list on there that people can sign up to, and all the social media channels are linked into that. And and let me pause you for a second, Rachel. For our listeners out there, it, the, the website to go to is www.zerowasteweek.co.uk. I'm on it right now. It's a beautiful website, and you can sign up for Rachel's newsletter right there. Go ahead, Rachel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. And the, the one thing I will say that even though it's .co.uk is – the other thing that's happened with Zero Waste Week is it's actually become international. So I've got people signed up in at least 85 countries that I know of. Oh, wow. Uh, but wow. the reach is potentially more because obviously I don't know everybody that's engaged with the week. Um, so it had its own week in, uh, sorry, its own website in 2013, um, it was. Right. And, and it's just, it's just continued to grow exponentially. And in, it was 2018, I think it was. So that was in the 10th year where it really seemed to explode, John. And the week was actually, given i think you have the same scheme over there by the government called the point of light i don't know if you're aware of that but it's a it's a government scheme that basically gives volunteers that are doing as they say outstanding things this point of light award and i was given that in 2018 for the campaign wow congratulations that's wonderful no, I haven't heard of it, actually. I haven't heard of a lot of it here. No. OK, so so I've got my little certificate and my handwritten card from the prime minister. <laughs> um, and actually, I got a Christmas card that year from her as well, which was that wow. was quite amazing. Um, it was Theresa May then. We've changed prime ministers since then. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing that happened in 2018 was the hashtag trended on Twitter, which that was an exciting moment for me to actually see it in that list of all the hashtags that people click on. It trended for two days. Um, and now that hashtag reaches between sort of 45 and 55 million impressions every, every zero waste week. Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. Holy. Whew. So, I mean, your reach is far. Did, did you ever imagine, did you ever imagine in, that it would get this big? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> and this campaign is still run from my dining table, basically. <laughs> you know, Which, by the way, 
Which, by the way, you were way ahead of the trend at work at home. You were already ready for this whole uh, crisis and pandemic and ever whatever, this new trend at work at home. You were a, a forerunner and precursor to this before anybody else. Well, do you know, it's interesting you say that because a few years ago, a university student did her dissertation on Zero Waste Week. And she wanted to know whether online campaigns could affect behavioral change, which was a fascinating thing to be a part of. And I remember her saying to me in an interview, she said, what you're doing is cutting edge. And I'm like, really? I'm just using social media to see what sort of reach I can get with it. But I think maybe she had a crystal ball or something because it would appear that maybe it was after all that now we are understanding the power of working virtually with one another. Right, right, right. Wow. Well, obviously you've made with those kind of impressions, it's just incredible. So keep going. I want to. So now where are we now and where are you in the journey and 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 where can you take this this year and beyond when we get to the let's say this a new normal, which I'm going to say is going to be a new better, hopefully, like you and I were talking about off the air earlier. Yeah. So um The other big change then in the last 10 years is when I spoke to you originally, I was speaking mainly to householders, to individuals at home that wanted to do their thing. And what's happened as the Zero Waste Week campaign has grown year on year and it's proven that it's here to stay because a lot of people set up campaigns and then after a couple of years, it's, you know, it's too much to do or they get tied up with other things and they die back. So I think when people realise in 2018, something like that, OK, this woman's here to stay. <laughs> um, I started to get a lot more interest from businesses and schools and universities and organisations who were saying, how can we take part? And so that's allowed me to go into businesses. I now work with a partner Anna, who's brilliant at face-to-face stuff and doing inspiring talks and workshops and that kind of thing. So what she does throughout the year is she goes into businesses or, at the moment, meets with them on Zoom and will hold lunchtime talks or all-day workshops or pop-up clinics because what we're finding is that both employers and employees they, they really want to get on board with this. In fact, I've got a statistic, which I'm just finding, which says that sure. so 50, 59% of consumers expect companies to make a stand on climate and environment issues. Wow. Okay, and for, and for employees, 65% of people say they would leave a job if the company that they were working for harmed the environment. Hmm. That's so that's incredible. interesting. Yeah. It is, isn't it? So what companies are doing is they're understanding that even if they don't quite know what to do and what to tell their employees, their employees want to know. They want to be part of the solution. So we get called into this time last year. We were running workshops for their staff on just how to have a a more sustainable Christmas or something like that. Or it might be that we go in halfway through the year and they're running some kind of – workshop or a, a, a waste awareness event of their own and they want us to go in and just talk to people about I don't know reducing plastic or reducing food waste all those things that when people go home they have to deal with and it's causing them stress um, and the upside of it is that when the employees get fired up about it, they automatically then want to go and take what they've learned into the workplace. So it actually benefits the company because then they can start to look at their triple bottom line. They're impressing their staff so they're going to get more loyalty and they're actually looking at their sustainability issues and they're starting to deal with them. So it's just a really nice way of getting good effects for everybody plus the environment. When did Anna join? Uh, officially two years ago, but she's been just this amazing person who's been, she was one of my blogging ambassadors, actually. So I I get a team of ambassadors together so that they share the message to their readers. And she's been 
just 100% behind me and has been phenomenal this year because to be perfectly honest with you, here's my little confession. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking at the beginning of this year, I don't know if I've got the energy to run another Zero Waste Week campaign. And she came along, swept me up and said, come on, I'll do half the work for you. And (laughs) was true to her word. Wow. I know. That's she's so, been amazing. That's a real partner. That's a real partner for you. What a great person. Absolutely. Um, she she really did reduce my workload. And what we've done as well is we've put together some online courses so people can learn at their own pace if they want to. And there's like video courses and audio courses, which that's another thing that some businesses or local authorities do. They actually buy you know, 10 or 50 or 100 courses and they let their staff or their residents do them. So that's another way that we can reach people. So these are all on your website, zerowasteweek.co.uk. They are. There's a shop there and then there's little filters that people can use to, to search for different things. So there's about four or five courses at the moment. Wow. And and how's it going? Is Has the... I know coronavirus has distracted everyone, obviously, for the obvious reason. So that, but prior to that, was the sell through, was the pull through from corporations in the UK and other parts of the world more than you thought it was going to be, less than you thought it was going to be, or just about as much as you thought it would be? Oh, that's a really good question. It's probably about what I thought it would be. Um, and what I've noticed, certainly in the last 10 years, is when I originally spoke to you, I was a bit fringe. I was a bit odd. And people used to look at me and think, what is she doing? And, <laughs> and now it's not the case. You know, everybody, everybody does their recycling, don't they? It's just kind of normal. And what's even more normal is people are looking at products in outrageous packaging and are horrified by it. Um, So that's really good. Um, And I think it's filtering through into the workplace. And I mean, there's certainly more interest than there used to be. And I found, I mean, little did we know what this year was going to bring. And and I was quite worried sort of during June and July, thinking I've done all this preparation for this year's Zero Waste Week in September. Mm. But is anybody is anybody going to be interested or have they actually got other things to think about, you know, right. like like their health and like this crazy world we've worked yeah. out to be in? Um, and what I found was there was still a lot of interest. And I and I was thinking, OK, why is this? And I'm just, you know, I'm just doing I'm playing with ideas here. But I wonder with the whole Corona thing, it's completely out of our control you know, we can't control it. We we can't do much about it. We just have to, you know, isolate, wash our hands, do do those things. But with the Zero Waste Week campaign, it's about putting control back to the people. So I'm saying if we focus on, you know, food waste this year, then that is in your control. What happens in your kitchen is actually up to you. And I wonder if that's why it was still very popular this year, because people thought, oh, yeah, this is something that I can I can feel empowered about after a very odd year where I felt very disempowered. I don't know. I think you're right. I really think you're right. And like you said, a lot of people have time like we were talking about before we went on the air. Rachel, a lot of people have had time to think and hopefully reflect on what's going on right now in the world during this lockdown period, um, what's going on in their own lives. And I I watched on YouTube um, a video uh, a few months back uh, of Nelson Mandela. He was being interviewed about his time in prison. And the interviewer asked him a great question. He said, how did you survive your time in prison? And metaphorically speaking, many of us, feel like the lockdown after having all our freedoms for all most of our adult lives and childhoods is a form of a prison. Mm -hmm. And his response was, I didn't survive prison while I was there. I was planning for when I got out. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's. And as you said, you were the one who said, hopefully the signals 
the information that people have reflected on during this tragic time will make them plan and prepare for a better world after we get out of this. Yes. And I think I read a survey where people were asked, did they want to go back to normal, inverted commas, and a, a vast majority of people did say no, which is heartening to hear because there are aspects of me that, oh gosh, I, I do want to go back to normal. <laughs> right. um, but there are, there are other parts of me that, you know, even being on the journey, the zero waste journey, as long as I've been, I made big changes during lockdown when I saw what was happening. I got more resourceful with my waste. Um, I, I grew more food in the garden and I preserved more food, maybe stuff that I might have thought, oh, I'll just compost that or I'll throw it to the chickens. I was like, no, actually, it needs to go into a human stomach. And, and I've been doing this for 14, 15 years. But even, yeah, even I made quite significant changes throughout lockdown, preparing for, as you say, a, a better future and wanting to hold on to some of the things that were good, like the, even the community spirit. Right. Um, all, all those things, uh, I think, are, well, they're, they're all linked, isn't it? It's all about, you know, when, when we use the word environment, I know I'm focusing on the, the tangible environment, the earth and the water, but it's, it's about our community environment as well. Perfect. You know, and, and, I'm, and I'm like you. Why aim for a new normal when we could aim for a new better? Mm. You know, really. Yeah, let's let's dream big. Let's dream big for all of us. And, uh, you know, A, we deserve it. And we deserve it as just individuals, but we deserve it collectively as a community, as a city, as a, as a country, as a planet. Because as we all have learned, everything that we do environmentally is borderless now. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, um, and, and everything we do to the environment, we do to ourselves. That's the that's the real key that I think people are starting to join the dots. <clears throat> Whereas yeah. before, it's quite difficult to to get that across to people that you know why, why does reducing waste to help the environment? And it's 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 joining the dots. Even the fact that now we're eating plastic because it's in the fish. You know, people that eat fish, they're eating plastic. Uh, it's, or it's in our water. Um, so these are the reasons we need to be doing this stuff, because for a long time, you know, the environmental movement has said, oh, we need to save the planet. Actually, we don't need to save the planet. The planet's going to be fine. Right. And if it comes to it, it will shake us off like a dog shaking off fleas and um, it will carry on very well without us. We need to look after the planet so that we have somewhere for our grandchildren to grow up on. It's really true. And that's our responsibility. Mm. It's really our responsibility. Um, Rachel, where, where, you know, where do you want to take this now? Where do you want to take uh, zero waste week dot co dot UK and your great tribe that you've already built over the last 10 years. Now you have a partner on a, Lay out the next just three years for me and for our listeners. Like, how big can this get? And is it going to be corporate, more corporate sales? Is it going to be um, uh, just more individual activity? Where do you want it to go when, you, when you're when you visioning this out? Hmm. Okay. So I noticed something happening that started last year when I was running Zero Waste Week campaign. And that was it's almost become its own identity. So prior to that, it was Zero Waste Week run by Rachel Strauss, you know, and linking back to the website and all of that stuff. And now it would appear that it's just out there in the wild, which is fantastic. You know, it's it's like if if I think of a, a, a big brand, I, I can remember the name of the brand, but I may not know who's behind that brand. So it's it's almost become its own thing. Mm. So that's mm. 
really lovely that it's almost like a, a household name and, and nobody really knows where it all started. And, I, and I'm OK with that. I can put my ego out of the way and that's fine. <laughs> um, what, what I would love is we've created a course for um, householders to help them reduce food waste because actually if we can reduce food waste that goes a long way to helping with climate change and a, a, a goal I have at the moment is over the next couple of years I would love to be able to get local authorities on board to fund that course so that I can get it into every single household um, initially obviously in the UK <laughs> Um, but I would like everybody at home to have access to that online course and to be working towards reducing their food waste. Now, I don't want to give anything away, but didn't you say for our listeners, if they signed up for your online courses, would you, uh, because they heard it on the impact, would you give them a discount? I definitely will. Yes, of course. 75% of any of the courses. And the coupon code is IMPACT75, IMPACT75? Yeah. Wow, that's so generous of you, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, final thoughts. Before we say goodbye for this time and not forever, um, mm -hmm. Rachel, leave us with some final thoughts uh, on, on uh, from your, you know, and I failed to tell our listeners at the beginning, you're speaking from to us today. I'm in Fresno, California, and you're so kind to take the call today and do the interview from the UK. You're in the UK. Some final thoughts from uh, from from the wonderful United Kingdom and Rachel Strauss. OK, so I'm going to go back to a phrase that I I use this phrase a lot, but I've been told it has a lot of impact for people. So mm. when you go to throw something away, I would just encourage people to stop for a moment and ask themselves where away is, because mm. it's always somewhere else. It's an incinerator. It's a landfill site. It's the bottom of the ocean or it's an animal's stomach. Mm. Mm. That's that's about as impactful as you get. And thank you for that. And for our listeners, again, please go to www.zerowasteweek.co.uk to sign up for Rachel's newsletter. You could sign up for an online course. She's so generous. She'll be giving out a discount to anyone who signs up because they heard it on the Impact Podcast. You could use the coupon code IMPACT75. Rachel, I know it's been 10 years. It feels like it's been a day, maybe a week, maybe just a quick minute. And I know your nickname is Mrs. Green, but I'm also going to dub you and give you the nickname now Mrs. Impact. Because you are <laughs> truly, you are truly just a wonderful and special person making an impact on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. The world needs more people like you. You're constantly making the world a better place. And thank you again for joining us today on oh, the Impact thank Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. 